Econ gang! So this is an ABAS model. We're in an inflationary gap. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> What's up, Econ gang? This is Mr. Jager. Today we're going to talk about the circular flow and gross domestic product. This is uh, for Krugman's Economics for an AP course, third edition, module 10. So if you are taking an AP uh, macro class or you are taking an introductory macro class, this is going to be the perfect video for you. Every country has some sort of form of accounting called national accounts. Um, just like you and I, we have some sort of inflow of money that we get paychecks for, an outflow of money where we uh, go and spend money on and we need to account for those and we do account for those just as as countries do now here we have uh, a very simple circular flow diagram here we have two groups which are the households and the firms right and we can see here that uh, the inner circle is uh, flowing in one direction while the outer circle is flowing in a different direction, providing goods and services and factors of production on the outer circle, and the inner circle is income and spending. There are two markets in this circular flow model, right? Again, this being a very simple circular flow model, you have the product market and firms. And so the important thing to understand with the circular flow model is who is supplying and who is demanding goods and services and uh, factors of production. So here you can see that firms supply goods and services to households, while households supply factors of production to the firms. And then another thing to note here are product markets. Product markets are going to be like a store, right? Or the mall where you can go in and you can purchase uh, different goods, right? So here you can see that households are spending in the product market and in return they are getting the uh, goods and services. Now to make this a little bit more complex, what we do is we go ahead and add in the government in the middle of our circular flow. Now you can see that taxes inflow to the government uh, from uh, households and from firms outflow from the government for those taxes are going to be goods and services and transfer payments. Now what are transfer payments? Transfer payments are going to be something like welfare checks, uh, social security, uh, any type of redistribution of wealth. Now um, also for the factors of payment and for the product market you can see that uh, from the government goods and services are going to flow out of the government and uh, government, I'm sorry, government and services are gonna flow out of the market and into the, into the government is going to be goods and services. So when the government needs uh, buses or they need certain type of airplanes or they need uh, for schools, they need different products to run a classroom like desks, they go to the product market and they purchase it just like, uh, just like households would. Now, uh, another important key element to the circular flow model is injections and leakages. So uh, leakages, uh, two main leakages are going to be savings, right? So from households when they get their paychecks and they put that money into the bank, that's going to be a leakage and you're taking money out of the circular flow, right? That's going into a bank. Now, uh, later we're going to talk about money in reserves and that that portion of, of the savings gets uh, multiplied from loans, but uh, that's for a, a, another, mo another module. Now, another leakage would be um, imports, right? When money goes out of the country to another country for an import, right? So like, for example, with Mexico, if we are going to purchase uh, avocados from Mexico, uh, our U.S. dollars go into Mexico, right? Or our money goes into Mexico, leaving the circular flow that we have for our country. Now, injections, injections into the circular flow are going to be exports. So when we export goods and people, other countries are buying goods from the United States or from your particular country, then that would inject money into this circular flow, right? Another way for an injection would be... Um, 
financial markets. And that's where foreigners would take out a loan to make a large purchase maybe in the United States. So if Toyota is going to buy a new factory or something here in the United States, maybe they go to a Wells Fargo or a Chase uh, or some large bank and uh, take out a loan from that bank. And that again, you know, they're taking yen or from Japan and injecting that into the, uh, into the circular flow. Now, gross domestic product. What is gross domestic product? Gross domestic product essentially is all the spending that we do in this country, GDP. Um, there's three ways to get GDP. And it's a form of national accounting. How, how are we doing as a country? Like, how is our GDP or our gross domestic product? So three ways to calculate GDP are is the expenditure approach, the income approach, and the value added approach. So we're gonna look at each, uh, each one of these, right? The expenditure approach is all final goods and services purchased in the United States are gonna be measured in US dollars. And this is in one given year what's not included in the expenditure approach is what are called intermediate goods right and that's uh since they are not counted in the final product now an intermediate good would be something like this if you were to go and purchase a car you're not going to get a bill for the tires the windows the stereo the upholstery the seats and all that no uh, you get one bill for the entire car and that's because all those intermediate goods the intermediate goods being the tires the upholstery, the windows, the, the seats, and the stereo, those are all included in the final good. Now, the big equation for the expenditure approach or the big equation for GDP is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now, C is consumer spending. Um, consumer spending is the largest pro portion of the GDP through the expenditures report approach. And so consumer spending is any time that you spend money on goods. So you go to lunch, you buy lunch, you're adding to the GDP through consumer spending. You go and buy a, a t-shirt at the mall, you're adding to consumer spending. Now, investment spending. Now, a lot of students get confused with investment spending. They think investment is from the personal finance realm, right? There's when you are uh, investing into the stock market. That's the furthest thing from, from what this is. Investment spending is when a business goes and invests in itself to make it a better business. So for example, if uh, all the McDonald's in the, in the country were to go and purchase new fryers, right? That would be a form of investment spending. Anything, again, trucks, if they're gonna go buy new trucks, fuel efficient trucks uh, to, to, to move goods around, then that, again, that business would be uh, business, or that would be investment spending. So businesses trying to make themselves are spending to improve or make their products better, right? Um, government spending, <clears throat> that's pretty, pretty straightforward whenever the government spends money. So uh, defense spending, public education spending, um, health healthcare spending, any of those uh, types of spending uh, that the government does. Now net exports, that's gonna be uh, exports minus imports, right? So the X stands for exports, while the M uh, stands for imports. Now in the United States, our M is always going to be a larger number than our X. We import quite a few more goods than we export, right? Um, and of course, that is for the United States, but that depends on your particular country. Uh, maybe you are in, your country is importing more goods than uh, exporting, right? The income approach is uh, using the uh, wages and income from all the factors of production, right? And you add those all up and that would give you the income approach. The value added approach is the value of sales of uh, co minus the cost of intermediate goods equals the value added approach. So for example, this would be like the cost of lumber, lumber minus the cost of the bed frame. If we were making bed frames, right? Uh, the cost of the lumber minus the cost of the bed frame sold uh, would equal the GDP. So what's included and what's not included in the GDP? So intermediate goods, again, we've already kind of touched on that. Uh, intermediate goods are all the goods that go into making the final good, right? And then used goods, so like anything that you buy from Savers or Goodwill, all those things would not be included in, uh, in the GDP. Financial assets, so any money that's gained on, uh, on the stock market or 
interest that you get from the uh, from your savings account, those would not be included in the GDP because essentially you're not making a product with that. Uh, illegal goods, of course, those are not going to be included. Uh, volunteer and household work. Now, uh, household work, um, let me just give you an example because that one's a little tricky. So let's say that you own a lawn mowing business, right? And you mow your own lawn. And so you're mowing your own lawn, that would not be counted towards GDP. However, if you were to go door to door and start charging $10 to mow other people's lawns, then that would be counted towards GDP. So remember, when you do stuff for your own home, it doesn't count, but when you do stuff outside of your home, that does count, uh, depending on uh, uh, with your business, right? Um, so that's gonna be it for, uh, for us today. I hope you guys learned a lot about the circular flow model. Hope you guys have a great day, and thanks for listening. Peace.